Okay, this video is about the law of sines and how to use it to solve for parts of a triangle. And we'll look specifically at the cases where you're given two angles and a side. It could be the side between two angles or the side outside those two angles. It depends just where their location is. But basically, it's two angles and a side that we're looking at today. All right, first of all, what is the law of sines? Well, if you have a triangle and your angles are A, B, C, big A, B, big B, big C, the sides across from them are the little a's. Okay, so big A is the angle, little a is the side across from big A. Little b is the side across from angle big B. Little c is the side across from angle big C. That should be a little c. So this, the, um, the law says this, if triangle ABC has sides little a, little b, little c, then little a divided by the sine of a is equal to little b divided by the sine of b, or little c divided by the sine of c. And you'll notice that the reciprocals are true as well. You just keep either the angles on the top and the sides on the bottom, or the sides on top and the angles on the bottom. Doesn't matter, it works both ways. All right, so we'll use this quite a bit. Um, and for this stuff, for, for law of sines and law of cons, you wanna make sure that your calculator is in degree mode, okay? Radian mode will mess you up on this, but degree mode is where you wanna be. So always check that first. All right, for example, one given two angles and a side outside that. So I'm given angle B, angle C, and then little b. So that, that little b is not between those two angles, but that doesn't really matter. You still have two angles and a side. So I need to solve for big A, I need to find little a, and I need to find little c, all the missing parts of my triangle. So what you're gonna do, first is you're gonna find the missing angle. Well, how do you do that? Remember, all the angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So to find big A, I'm going to take 180. I'm going to subtract the two angles it gave me, 28.7 minus 102.3. When I do that, I get the angle 49. So big A is 49, even. Now I go for some sides. And it won't matter which one you solve for first, little a or little c. The ratios work the same. So if I want to find little a first, I need little a over the sine of big A, which was 49, equals little b over the sine of big B. All right, now I find the missing sides using the law of sines. That's what I did here, so that the ratio shows up. So then you're gonna cross multiply. So the sine of 49 times 27.4 equals the sine of B. I'm sorry, B is 28.7, isn't it? times little a. I need to solve for little a, so I need to divide this sign out. And make sure you catch that it's the sign of 28.7, not 28.7 alone. So this will cancel, and then a will equal whatever this is when I put it in the calculator. So make sure you type in the sign of 49, close the parentheses, multiply by 27.4, then divide by the sign of 28.7 close your parentheses. When you do that, you get 43.06. Okay, so let's just do two decimals on these, just keep it simple. Um, 43.06, so there's little a. All right, so then I'm going to walk through the similar process to find little c. All right, little c over the sine of c, big c, big c was 102.3. And then I can use either A or B because I know those sides and those angles. All right, so if I use just the given, the given um, side was 27.4 and the sine of B, B was 28.7. So again, I'm going to cross multiply times 27.4 equals, I'm running out of space here, C times the sine of 28.7. Need to solve it for C, so I'm going to divide by the sine of 28.7. So C, when I type all this in the calculator, being very careful to get parentheses closed and whatnot, I get 55.75.
So there's my value for C. So I know you may not have calculators at home, but there's some online you could use, but even still, you should understand the process here, okay? So there's the three missing parts for this one. All right, let's try another one here. On this one, I'm given two angles and the included side, the side between them. So A, B, and I'm given little c, all right? So I'm going to work through it the same way I did before. First, I'm going to find the missing angle. That was big C. So to find big C, I'm going to take 180 degrees and subtract the two angles that I know. Minus 39, minus 98. When I do that, I get 43. So big C is 43 degrees. Okay. Now, I can find little a or little b next. It won't matter which way I go. So I'm just going to do little a first. So little a over the sine of 39, that's the big A, equals little c over the sine of 43. That's what I know. All right, so then I'm just going to cross multiply sine of 39 times 22 equals A times the sine 43. I'm going to divide by the sine of 43 to get A by itself. When I do this, I am going to get at 20.3 three zero. Okay, so that's little a. And the only missing part now is little b, so I need to find little b. So little b over the sine of big B, which is 98, equals, you could use the c's or the a's, it won't matter. It works the both the same way. Sine of 43, little c on top. Cross multiply, sine of 98 times 22 equals B times the sine of 43. Again, divide by the sine of 43. Not just 43, but the sine of 43. Those will cancel, and then B will be my result, what I get. The sine of 98 plus 22 divided by the sine of 43. To be equals 31.94. All right, I hope that makes some sense. You're just using a lot of signs and those ratios. For, okay, for the whisk, I want you to try this one. Um, notice you're get, you have two angles and a side. You have big A, big B, little c. You need to find the missing parts. That means you need to find little a, little b, and big c. Using these steps, you should be able to get there. Okay, good luck, and we'll see you in class.